So this year I installed my own solar panel system here on my own roof and I learned a lot during the process. And so for today's Circuit Bread Practicals, I wanted to share with you the top seven general things that I learned while installing my own solar panels on my roof. So with that, I'm gonna start with number one. The first thing, as discussed in another video, is that solar installers, they either make a huge profit or they just cost a lot for some reason. So when you're looking into it and trying to decide whether to do it for yourself or going to have somebody else do it for you, crunch the numbers yourself, look at your own capabilities. And for most people, installing your own solar is the way to go versus having somebody else do it. But for more details, go check out our other video because I beat that to death. The second thing I learned as I was going through this process was to use a solar plan design company. So I did not come up with the plans with these. I didn't come up with the plans that you have to submit to your city, county, state. In our case here in Idaho, we had to submit it to the state of Idaho for the review. I did not come up with those plans. I paid somebody a couple of hundred dollars to come up with those plans and they weren't perfect. I had to go and I had to fix a couple of things and there were certain issues, but they did the vast majority of the groundwork that I wouldn't have understood, the NEC requirements, all of that sort of stuff. So definitely it is worth the money to go to somebody else to get the design for your system. However, garbage in, garbage out. You have to give them as much good information as possible for them to design you the best system that works for your situation. The third thing is you definitely need to get familiar with the NEC or the National Electric Code. Now, every state or every locale has a different version that they follow. So I don't know if it'll be the 2017 or 20, whatever version that your, um, that wherever you live has to follow. But you need to be familiar with, first of all, what version does apply to you? And second of all, what is in there? Because when you get those plans, um, if you followed my advice for number two and had somebody else do it, there's gonna be a lot of references to that code. And you should go and read that code yourself, all of the references in the plans to have a better understanding. Because as you go through the process, if you don't know what's happening, you're not going to be able to follow it. And you might make deviations from the plan unwittingly and cause problems. Or you might get asked questions by the plan reviewers and you don't know what's going on. So it's really a good idea to familiarize, familiarize yourself with at least portions of the NEC that are applicable to solar installation. So that was probably for me the most painful part of this entire process was understanding all of that crazy legal technical jargon that is for me a pain. The fourth thing is to check your equipment when you order it. So you're going to be spending thousands of dollars on this equipment that you're going to be putting on your roof. As soon as it gets here, open that stuff up, review it, take pictures. Um, I ended up having to go through a couple of different companies to get things. And one of the companies, they were very explicit when you order it. And they said, when it shows up, take a picture inside the truck before they pull it out. Once it comes out, get everything un unstrapped, take pictures as you're going along and do not sign for anything until you've examined everything. And that would have been great advice if that had been the first company I went through because the first company I went through didn't tell me at all what to do on the receiving end. Two of the panels were broken and it turned into a big fiasco, a huge mess. And I'm never gonna work with them again because they were just terrible to work with. And they basically said, sorry, you're out of luck. You don't get to do anything. So. Definitely review your rights before you get them. Know what the policy of the company is that you go through and document everything because whether or not it's documentation to show the company or documentation to show your credit card when you are submitting a fraud claim, you need that documentation. So I don't know what it is, but as we've been building this house, we've gotten a lot of freight and freight just gets beat up. So look at everything. Two panels were broken. I had bent leads on inverters, things like that. The inverters still were functional, but those solar panels are completely shattered and completely useless. So document everything, know your rights, research it, and get in contact with the company as soon as possible if you have any problems. Very important one because there's a lot of money riding on the equipment. The fifth thing I learned was in regards to the installation itself. Even besides what was in the plans, found out that Grounding is everything. Ground the heck out of everything. Ground your boxes together. Everything's grounded together. You have grounding between the, the rails, between the inverters. Everything is grounded to death. Do not underground anything. 
So when I did this, I thought that I was being extremely thorough with the grounding and I still, during the inspection, was told, oh no, you have to do a little bit more grounding in this regard. And I, oh, holy cow, they, it's everywhere. So do not be surprised if you have to ground things more than you thought even possible. And another thing, not so much a lesson learned, but something you should be aware of during the installation phase is be careful. This is a really steep roof and we were up here for, I think it took us about 10 hours total of installation up here on the roof, uh, which considering how much we were gonna get charged to make it, that's not very long, but still 10 hours up here, do not fall off. One fall off the roof and suddenly you've paid more in emergent or in ER bills and medical bills than makes it worth it. So when you're doing the installation, please, please be careful and ground the heck out of everything. So the sixth thing is what we found out after we installed this is that bureaucracy is a real issue. <laughs> so uh, we're in Idaho and I did a lot of talking with my brother-in-law down in California and we found out that just everything's different. The way everything is run is different. Here in Idaho, we got the plans reviewed by the state and then the state sent out a, an inspector, an electrical inspector who reviewed everything, looked here, made sure that it matched the plans. Um, and then we had to get Idaho Power to actually come out and review it and make sure everything was good before they flipped it on. Whereas my brother-in-law said that they had one person review it and then basically Edison, their power company down there said, okay, you can flip it on. And nobody even came out and looked at it from the power company. So things are going to be different. However, for us, it took us three months from the time this was successfully installed before we could actually turn it on because of the process, because of going back and forth and the the review of the plans uh, versus what the inspector saw the inspector's like this actually doesn't match with the plans and i disagreed but i'm not the inspector and so he made us go back to the state to get it re uh reapproved and then he had to come back and do and it took us three months now i think that's abnormal i don't think it should take that long but the bureaucracy is real and be prepared for that because it can be frustrating which brings us to our last thing the seventh thing if you are going to be installing your own solar is to be patient. This is the thing that I've had to learn because I started this nearly at the beginning of the year and right now it's almost October. So it was around February to now October before we finally got this turned on just about a week or two ago. It was, it took patience sometimes to not get angry. And fortunately, everybody I worked with, despite the bureaucracy, everybody here was incredibly nice, very friendly, but they had to work within the restrictions that they were given, which was frustrating, but fortunately they were at least polite and nice about it. So didn't have to have any issues there, but at the same time, that patience is necessary. And when you think about it, doing it by yourself, you're like, man, if this took me eight months just over the time of waiting for things and waiting for things to get shipped and waiting for things to get approved and things like that, going to a, to a solar installer, they can do it much faster. I could be making money a lot faster. Well, yes, that's true. If I'd gotten this installed back in March or April or whatever, it would have been producing money all this time instead of kind of sitting there. However, the cost for a solar, solar installer is so much greater than the cost of just waiting a couple of extra months to get it figured out. So just keep that in perspective that even if it's slow and even if it's frustrating, it's so much more cost, so much more economical to do it yourself. And it's really not that hard. I, really the vast majority of this was just waiting and getting things approved and waiting and following up with things. I feel like total time actually put into this was around three full working days, maybe four full working days. Though, if you count the amount of time of me worrying and, oh man, what's going on there? It was longer than that, but actually time spent working on this was only a couple of days and saved about $20,000, which is huge. So just keep it all in perspective, be patient, it'll be worth it in the end. And those are the seven things that I learned while installing my solar panels. If you're watching this and you've installed solar panels, please leave a comment sharing your experiences so that other people can learn from what we have done. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and we'll catch you in the next one.